All right. Hello. Hi, Greg. Good morning, Obi. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, well, as you said, when I was coming down the gravel path, yes. you said, look at the day. It's been raining, unseasonable rain, and today we've got sunshine, and so it's spring. And the birds are singing, the flowers are blooming. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's Well, uh the the the, rain, the miracle of the rainy season continues here into episode 10. Can you believe it? Episode 10. Yes, yes. I, I was thinking at this time, normally, it would be a very warm morning. Mm. We would have all the grass and the flowers, but it'd be much warmer mm -hmm. and perhaps drier. But this is this green at this time. Is amazing. That's right. That's right. The the uh, the grazing plants, like these European oats we have all around us here. These, yes. This avena, right? They they're they're holding on to their green later because of the uh, incredible saturation. They're also taller, which again mm. shows you that depending on the season and the rain, things vary. Nothing's the same. Right. 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 And you that's know. that complex system between. Oh, oh, you know what we're talking about here is fire threat or potential fire yeah. threat and fire season. Right. Do we have more fuel now because we have more water? Or is the ground saturated more? Which which is it? Which is how is this fire season going to be affected well, by that? It, it, I mean, you look around here, and I look at the grass here, and if I were not to cut it, without a doubt, Obi, there'd be so much more fuel for fire. Right. Which scares me because not everywhere on the mountain, not everywhere in Northern California, Central California, mm -hmm. Southern California, for that matter, where there's been this uh, unseasonable rain. Uh, there's so much fuel. I mean, you can see it right here if I were not to take care of this. Even the trees have grown so much. Look at how thick the leaves are on the oak trees there, the growth. I've never seen growth on these old trees. Of course, they were thirsty for so long, and they've yes. just taken this water and just gone wild. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Now, now I understand, though, uh, writ large across the California landscape in the middle of the 21st century here, after 100 years of uh, um, fire suppression, what we have here is an ingrown problem that... that uh, that is, the, uh, there, there's almost like a balance of scales that tip towards a better season when we have more rain because yes. there's so much buildup of fuel already. Yes. So, so the predictive model right now suggests that the fire season for 2023 is going to be less than, than, uh, than it is. But, but hey, we, I hope you, you're right than, because than if this fuel dries, it's fuel. And so that worries right. me. Right, right, right. right. Um, we have the water. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people have said to me, you know, I, in fact, I was just talking with, I was just in an interview with a newspaper a couple of weeks ago, I think the Point Reyes Light. Okay. And they were talking a lot about, you know, we, we co-manage uh, Point Reyes. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about working with the Audubon Society down there to do controlled burning. And I have to remind people that we are imitating the what the indigenous people did but we have to remember at the same time the land is not what it was when the indigenous people were here for example there's fuel and so forth oats and all of that that were not here then mm -hmm. and uh, we also had experts that were able to determine the right season the right day and could read the winds and could read the winds because that is so essential you've heard the stories of people who are doing control burning it gets out of control because of they don't course. have the wind shamans. Of course. The wind spiritual well, people. Even the word control is problematic, isn't problematic. it? Problematic. When it comes fire, to yeah. fire. Yeah. Right, right. It's yeah. almost, it's they almost prayed a, about these things. Mm -hmm. They fasted that the fire, knowing the power of fire, would help them rather than hurt them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did that fasting accord? A, a relationship with some spiritual it's always dimension? Yes, always sacrificing. Everything we did, like our dances, even as a kid, I remember with the old dreamers at the roundhouse up at Kashaya, they would fast for um, four days and four nights, uh, not eat any meat, um, just only drink water, um, uh, no sex, drugs, alcohol, nothing as a way of sacrificing and focusing on what you're going to do. Prepare yourself for the spirits and all of that sort of thing. Um, and in a state of mind to receive what you needed to receive, your knowledge and all of that to do the dance. Our dancing was a form of praying. And in order to pray, you had to sacrifice to be worthy to pray. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that sounds very, uh, it sounds almost like 
Stoic or Epicurean, like some one of these old Roman philosophies, right? Where you are in touch with, you master over your own body in, in order to master the world. You free yourself from pathos. You free yourself from, from the, uh, the, uh, you know, the passions of life, whether it be sex. Food, and, and, and that's the, that's the great thing that the Westerners didn't understand. I remember everybody reading Carlos Castaneda mm. and the Westerners, including Carlos Castaneda to a large degree, saw this as a way to get power, this spiritual connection with the earth and these things, power. power. But what I've understood from the Indian doctors here is it was in order to have power, you had to have a, an access those spirits that would give you power. It was a total relinquishment of the ego. Oh, okay. You know, you had to get rid of that sense of that you want power or control because you had to be totally vulnerable in order to hear what those larger spirits and things would tell you and connect you to other things. Um, and so it, the, the Western world of power, even spiritual power, is yes. that you, you are in control. Mm. Whereas when you received a song or a certain power, you had to live with that, you had to feed it, and it, you couldn't get rid of it in many cases, until you died. You mm. had to pass it on. And there's that word again, control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, the whole thing is to a reminder that all of these things are reminders, I, as I see it, that you are part of something and not in control of something. Mm. That you're in dialogue with something and that you're simultaneously vulnerable and powerful and you walk that tightrope. Mm, that's interesting to me, Greg. Now, that, that reminds me of a question. Now, we've got great questions coming in from our audience. Oh, great. Isn't that amazing? So we can always... Thank you, everybody. For I, I get so touched, Obi, that... I know. Uh, that somebody cares enough to listen to me but you I know but you know <laughs> oh come on yeah well I, I mean it's such a, it's such a privilege it's such a joy to be here with you yeah. once again Greg you know, yeah. so here we are here we are talking as fast as we can and the birds all around us are doing the exact same thing aren't they communicating I as think much they're as they are doing us at the moment there, but <laughs> all power to them right I'll use that power let the birds have power it's yes. right it's right so this this question we take questions all month long you can go to at Place and Purpose Live on Instagram, and you can put in uh, your your questions there in the comments, or you can do it right now, or, or you can go to placeandpurpose.live, the website, register your email address, and you get free books. Oh, you get yeah. entered into like getting our books for free, so that's pretty exciting. But here we have from Tracy, I live in a little old house on the at the foot of Sonoma Mountain in Glen Ellen. Oh, wow. the, the property is wide open, and I intend to keep it that way so the critters can move through as they need. But fences, high, blockade-like, are going up all around me. If you haven't already, I may have missed it. Can you share your perspectives on fencing? <laughs> so that, that that's a segue from control, from domination of the land, right? The, the fragmentation of property. Well, Tracy, uh, hello from the other side of the mountain. We're facing west, and I know you're on the other side. You're on the east side of the mountain. So good morning, and thank you for listening. And you're a neighbor. Um, we're somehow, you may, you'll may hear us now, but we're talking out in the air here. Um, <clears throat> uh, Tracy, you know, without getting into a political thing or a larger thing, Fencing, remember, the whole concept of fencing is about private property mm -hmm. and control. And so, unfortunately, we're in a world where private property is privileged. It's part of our po uh, national policy. It's part of who we have been uh, in this culture for a couple thousand years. And it's about who owns and who controls and what we keep out. Ultimately, Tracy, it's, it's a terrible problem for the wildlife because it blocks them. And what I know Obi has done and many other people are doing are trying to create corridors mm -hmm. where animals can go without being stopped by fences. The deer are, of course, stopped by fences. I have, just around my property here, some deer fencing, but I also have places lower where the rabbits and things can get underneath and get in and everything else. I just have the, just to kind of keep the deer away from close to the house. Right. But surrounding me is the, the preserve and a lot of open land, which is why there are cougars up here, as you probably know, and all of this, because 
as much as we can have open space where the animals can do their things and be free, the better. One of the problems also with fences for the deer and a lot of the things is it creates a habitat for cougars and bobcats because it's easy for them to trap the animals. Mm -hmm. The coyotes do the same thing. Yeah. So they use the fences as part of the adapting Obi, which is so amazing. They actually take advantage of the fences. And I've watched coyotes up here run deer into fences where they can't get over or through. So they're actually using the fences as hunting devices. That's fantastic. Yeah. The intelligence of predators. Yeah. Yeah, Well, they're reading the environment. Everybody's reading the environment. Right. Right. And we're part of it. And whatever we do, they're going to say, okay, well, you're helping us here. Right. Accidental opportunities yeah. for the ecosystem in to thrive in particular ways, right? You're right. Leading to, again, the, the predominance of that particular canid across, across the West, across the country. Uh, yeah. Uh, coyotes, so successful. I, I do want to also just mention, I know uh, my friend Carol Hart has been very preoccupied with up in Occidental people deer fencing you know, 5,000 acre tracts of land, huge tracts of land, which are trap the deer in those places and all the animals in those places. Um, and well, it's, it's interesting. Like wildfire doesn't kill animals. No. Fences, Fences kill animals. animals. You're at, that's what? the other thing, yeah. Obi, coming back to fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. All these impoundments of ecology that stop the flow of energy. That's just simply what ecology is, is the flow of energy yeah. in in a system between what is alive and what isn't alive feeding the living systems right so this is this is all of this energy i was just down in the desert greg and i um i wanted to see it for myself the big border wall and i saw it and i and i felt it gosh is that a scar on the landscape but again not to be too too uh political but just you can be e- real political with me. <laughs> ecologically I, uh, we, you know there there it's it's not a complete it's not a complete wall yeah but it is so severe start stopping grinding to a halt the migrations of the big vertebrates i'm thinking specifically of the peninsular bighorn sheep oh, yeah. that if if the wall were to stop were to be complete along the southern border of our largest state park, Anzabrego Desert State Park, it would mean the end of the peninsular bighorn sheep, right? And and what what a tragic legacy that would be. Uh, the flow of energy from one area to the next. Fences are my enemy. I I can't handle. I I I feel I, it. I don't. I feel, I've never seen the border wall except from a plane, Obi and. Mm-hmm. That was bad enough yeah. because then you really see the ex- how broad that is. And you're mm. absolutely right. The bighorn sheep. And going back to what I said, the cougars down there, the pumas down there, and the coyotes down there are going to use that to capture them. Yes, yes. So, you know, they're going to run them right into it. Just as, uh, you know, Trump and others want to ca- capture the immigrants. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I could, I could easily um, uh, take aim at uh, the other side of the political spectrum as well, as far as what a fence is, what capitalizing of the landscape is. In private general. ownership. Private ownership. Why? Why? I, it almost seems arbitrary to me uh, that you can own the land, but you can't own the sky. What's the difference? <laughs> well, we're trying apparently to own the sky. There's <laughs> we're doing, Russia and China and the U.S. and others are up there trying to oh, carve out spaces. Space, right, and remember, sure. we're, we got our eyes on the moon and even Mars. Um, but that whole colonizing notion of control, and it comes back to the agriculture. Thing, agriculture. Yeah. Um, remember, ninety-five. M- percent of the human diseases that we have today mm. are a consequence of domesticated animals mm. Mm. pneumonias all of these kinds of things measles all of these things are a result of domesticated animals and kind of what happened That's was what what happened was by the time the middle easterners 
moved in and the empires moved into Europe, people began to develop, uh, die, and then uh, those who survived had immunity, mm. which is why w- when the colonizers came from Europe to this new world, we instantly had no immunity to so many of those diseases that are animal, had animal origins, because mm. we didn't domesticate. Hmm. I see. So, um, uh, also, we hadn't had any time to, we'd never been exposed to those mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, in any event, um, we, we, it, it's really, you know, a, a huge problem mm. that, the, with domestication, but here we have it. And so what do we do? And these fences, Obi, and the stuff of capitalism and control and ownership, it all goes back to the big thing, fear. Mm. And, you know, I've been thinking about today's story i've been thinking today thinking about the issues of birth and spring okay but at the same time as i was thinking about that and hope i was i heard the uh, surgeon general i don't know if you saw his report uh, the other day that the greatest epidemic in america right now and i'll call it the father not the mother but the father of so many of our social and physical ills is loneliness. Uh. Loneliness. One in two Americans suffer it regularly. Uh. We're alone and afraid. Uh How do we reconnect? How do we connect with one another? And if we can't connect with one another, how in the world are we going to connect with this, the nature and stuff? Disconnection. It's a paradox, isn't it? Yes. We're all alone together. Or isn't that something, Moby? Yeah, yeah. We're all alone. There's more of us than ever. Yeah. And we're more alone than ever. And it, we have and more it's not, powers. It's not the, nu- the nutrient that is solitude. No. It's different than the, 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 the pathogenic quality of loneliness. It, two different, two completely different things, and I'm glad mm. you brought it up, mm. because solitude is important for things like self-examination or a cultivating a relationship with an oat plant or a flower or something like that. Mm -hmm. But loneliness predicated on disconnection. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Was it Tillich, the German philosopher mm -hmm. who said the original sin was separation? Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Separation. And I always think of that. And today we have more means to communicate with more people the entire world, and we've never suffered loneliness the way we are today. Family splintered, uh, m- mental illness, uh, alienation, alienation, all yeah. these things. And I guess I kind of hope, Obi, and I'm going way off the cuff here. I want to go back to spring and this beauty around. But that's what we're doing. Of course. Is that the, this kind of discussion and the people who are sharing this with us, it's a it's an opportunity to think about reconnecting. Mm. How do we get back together, Obi? What kinds of, what, how, what language, what stories do we tell that help us with ourselves and with one another and the world around us? There's nothing else to do now but that. Every great, glorious day, a call to action. A call to action in love. And this yeah. is, you mentioned today's story, so why don't we open the door to that? Okay. Okay, so today's story from your 2017 book, How a Mountain Was Made, is uh, the, the, the story called Rattlesnake Wins... Hummingbird's Heart. Hummingbird's Heart. Okay, so, so you know, they're... they're <laughs> the, the, these stories in this book, these these old stories that you have written and are stewarding, you know, these old stories that that have that ha- operate on a couple of different levels, right? They 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 can be interpreted as as kind of like children's stories, as evidenced by you know the yeah. the, the local kids actually performing this yeah. story the, in particular. The kids in my tribe are performing them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I you know I I I dive deep into the. Um, character analysis really is what they are. Yeah, uh, we've got um, we've got some very complex relationships ha- happening in this story here uh, between between. Um, but the, but the complex relationships are all centered around, I believe, this idea of love. 
and I think as the antidote towards the uh, the epidemic of loneliness, that might be a good inroad to this. Because so what we have in the story, let's just go through it real quick. We open with the community of characters. Uh, these these characters. There's from a beautiful woman time. that's There's available. A, a beautiful <laughs> woman that's available. That's right. That's right. I wonder, though, with the clumsiness, maybe the clumsiness of language, if we were speaking in the same language that the word Petaluma comes from, yeah. right? Your 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 ancestral yeah. languages. Yeah. If there would be so much engenderization of these, you know. Um, no, well, it's interesting. Uh, is there's a lot of pronouns. Right? There's a lot of pronouns, and listen, I'll tell you something. I'm I'm not as familiar with the Coast Miwok language, but I'm familiar with the Pomo language, Southern okay. Pomo language, and the verb is the salient feature of the language, not the subject. Oh, okay. English is a subject-oriented yes. language. Mm -hmm. Pomo is an action-oriented language. So, the characters or the the gender and all that is just a suffix to the verb. Mm. So I would go, it would be a literal translation like walking along, he walking along, walking along, walking along, saw the tree, walking along, came back, saw the tree, came back, came back, saw the tree. So you keep emphasizing the action. Mm -hmm. And if you, I don't want to say that topical features of a language um, uh, translate to different mindsets, let's say, but I do think that the stories when we see them, the traditional stories, the focus is on the character's actions and the consequence of actions. Right. Not what came first necessarily, not the so-called Western logic of things. Okay, okay. So it's more about, I got this idea and I was going to do this, and then look what happened. Right, right, right. right. So I have, it's action. So if we were to be telling these stories, let's say in Southern Pomo, there would be action going al along. And the old storytellers used to tell them in the dark, in the right. winter, yes. sitting on a table, and they would be experts at imitating the voices of the characters. Oh, I see. So you would sit in the dark, and you would be surrounded by all these actual characters, and you'd get lost in the voices. Ah, oh, very good, very yeah. good. I, I, I appreciate that. I'm sensitive to that. Here we are in the springtime. Uh, choosing this story because of its joyful nature, because of its its interconnected nature too, as as we are discussing love, feeling um, inebriated by the beauty of the flowers all around us, right? Yes. You know, I like that inebriated. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. A, a bit, a bit. Um, the pollen's getting to us, Hobie. <laughs> ah, the pollen's getting to us. That's very good. Yeah. So, so, so there is this woman who is available, and, and the first paragraph you say. The thing about her that is most beautiful is her heart. Yeah. So the title of the story is Rattlesnake Wins Her Heart. There's the there is the there is the object of the heart, which is which is manifest in the in you know, as the as the you know, the the the, the feather pattern on yeah. Anna's honey yeah. Um, yeah. that actually yeah. like, you know, did, yeah. and there's that But she had that. that when she was still in her human form, we can see the heart. But heart, of course, is the symbol of love. Of course. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. So so there's this there's this object, and this is a motif that occurs in many of your stories. Yeah. The relationship between object and power. Yeah. Right. So the power her heart is the thing which all of her suitors want, which is the love, which is her song. Yeah. The only song we have in this story is later by Rattlesnake, yeah. which is an interesting call to the mountain. Yeah. Which is an interesting call to community as well. So which is what she was doing for the old people, but well Right, 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 right. Now she was beautiful. We're still in but, the first paragraph. But but yeah. yeah. But you know, <laughs> that the whole important and I'm so glad you brought it up, Obi, mm -hmm. because she is a quote unquote, let's say physically beautiful young woman, but that does not compare to the beauty and power of her heart, mm. which she's in touch with. Right. And all the suitors, they all are focused on the material and capturing her somehow, controlling her with goods, with material things. Oh, there's a, okay, so you use that word. I didn't I didn't interpret it that way. I almost it almost seems to me, okay, so so then this like these four mammals Right, yes. we got fox, skunk, uh, and the, mountain lion, and uh, and and who's the fourth one? Uh, raccoon. Raccoon. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay, yeah. and so they come up, and 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 so so I, I bring up this gender thing again because it's just kind of interesting to me that you know in my sort of like, you know my my thick, imperial, heteronormative mind thinking like, 
This is not a relationship about traditional marriage in some sort of occidental sense to make babies, right? Mm. This is all about hummingbird's heart, yeah. which is which is a which is a displacement of that value towards procreation, towards just you know, having babies or like why, what is, what is the point there's of nothing, marriage? There's nothing here about getting married to make babies. Right. There's everything. <laughs> there's, there's, there, there goes the buzzards, which are really into uh, doing community work of babies and everything else. But uh, <laughs> uh, just well, That's an interesting take. <laughs> yes. But, uh, well, you know, only they'll, in the family, somehow it's only one female in the family of seven or ten of them that will lay the eggs, only a couple eggs, and then everybody else takes turns on it every season. We're talking about turkey vultures now? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So anyway, they're all busy finding a, a nest here. But uh, I, back to the story. And so, okay, Sorry, sure. everybody. Obi and I really, this happens every time we talk. Oh, we're, we're, we're in real time here. We're in real you know, time. We're <laughs> in the world. <laughs> we're in the world. So... Um, uh, the, the 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 whole point here is, and I love that you brought up the uh, heteronormative kind of thing because that is not at play here at all, and it was never in play in the dig- indigenous pre-contact world here in California. Relationships were always predicated on heart, mm. and so it the physical beauty, uh, your power or your songs are what made you beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, or, or what were valued right. uh, in another person. So, but but these but these guys that are courting her first, they try to bring her things in the tradition that you offer something to the father to the parents. Right? Well, are he, they courting her or courting Bobcat, the, her father? They're right? courting like, her, but you hit the nail on the head, <laughs> Ovi. They're courting her father so that he'll say yes. Right? You you can have her, and of course, ultimately she pretty much has to agree, but still the father can put pressure on her. Right. He doesn't deny her agency. He doesn't know. deny her agency. Yeah. But the big mistake, he sees in these goods an opportunity to get more and more goods for himself. So he creates this contest for each of these characters to whoever does the most, who brings me the most, who impresses me the most, will get my daughter will i i will accept you uh, i will accept you if she if she wants you i will accept you but you've got to show me how good you are so they bring all they have a competition where they you know it ends up with um mountain lion killing all these deer and doing all this mountain piling up mountain lion uh, killing all these deer and doing all of this sort of thing piles of meat just uh, materialism if you will out of control Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Again, I, I, I brought a, I, I, I think that there's another spin on this too. It's, a, it's a nuanced conversation. I think also we have this other character, Coyote, yeah, chief here, right? Yeah. So, so Bobcat kind of says, "Oh, look, we've got four su- suitors. Maybe there's more. Yeah. You know. So let's open it up to a day of, of, of contests, yes. right? Let's yeah. see. So he, he, he expands the thing, right? Right. And, well, it, it remember possibly to get more people to bring him more things. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but it's Coyote who says, okay, so there's, there, there, there's, a, there's a couple of things that happen here, right? So uh, the, the, there's this mountain of blueberries that skunk brings. There's this mountain of acorns that raccoon brings. There's this mountain of uh, uh, headdress feathers that, yeah. uh, that, uh, that uh, fox brings. I don't yes. know exactly if, yeah. if, if I'm well, tying exactly right. the matter. bounty to the exact <laughs> yeah. character. But, uh, and, then, and then Mountain Lion, uh, who's sort of like... Um, Gosh, he's sort of he sort of reminds me of like a Disney prince kind of thing. Yeah, he's he's he's, 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 he's the know, big muscly strong, strong guy who brings <laughs> yeah. brings all the deer. And there and there is like an interesting relationship here too between like a hierarchy of animals and 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 spirit powers in that sacred time, right? It the would f- seem that way. Flicker Flicker's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Flicker yeah. might have something to say about yeah. the ten thousand birds that were killed, killed yeah. or or deer, or deer, or, yeah. or later as we find out, cricket yeah. is is another character, yeah. rattlesnake. Yeah. So so Bobcat then says, "Oh, this is great. Anybody else? Anybody else want to play? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody yeah. else want to yeah. throw their hat in the ring? Yeah. And and here comes and describe him very interestingly. And this is this is this really plays with my imagination too. I think he used rattlesnake walks up. Yeah. 
rattlesnakes don't walk. Yeah, but as a human, he does. <laughs> but as a human, he does. Or, yeah. or a person, right? Yeah. When yeah. animals were people. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so it's almost like this, this, this mask of God. I mean, yeah. it's this mask of into the spiritual realm yeah. that these these yeah. other that these characters have, yeah. and it's interesting too because people don't actually have masks. You know, there's no tradition of of mask making necessarily. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a tradition of, of hiding the face of sorts, but yeah. it's not, it's, 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 it's a different metaphor. Um, now, uh, so rattlesnake walks up and he says, I've got something. And, th and if I were to write like an essay on this book, I would probably, uh, uh, on this particular story, I'd probably call it something like rattlesnake as Prometheus. Because this is a that's Obi. I love you, Obi. <laughs> you, you got you. That's Obi to a T. I just got to tell you, keep going. I don't right, want to interrupt right. you, but that's because but that's he, a great he brings essay, this gift yeah. to the people. Yeah, yeah. From the sacred beings on the mountain. Yes. Yeah. And this then this gift he brings. He says it's going to take me two weeks, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the crickets to come up from Copeland Creek, come up to the top of the mountain. That way you will know when when autumn starts. And you this need to start make sure you have enough world. food and for winter and stuff. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's a Promethean act. Yes. Right. Yes, it's like yes. a gift from yeah. sacred time to the people. Yeah. Right. And uh and and so that's gonna take me two weeks. So in the meantime, Coyote says, in the share this with everybody. Yeah. Right. And I think that that is where your idea that that Bobcat is a materialist sublimates itself towards the good of the people right, right. And, and coyote the, as the wise leader at least in this story uh sees that and that's he commands that he says as the leader of the people in the meantime we'll wait and you know you got to spread out the food and the goods to everybody mm. not just for bobcat for not just for bobcat that's right and it reminds me of mark malcolm margolin's quote in the ohlone way when he says in uh in that culture, peoples of the South, I imagine it's similar for mm -hmm. peoples of Petaluma Valley, but but that wealth is not about having. Wealth is about giving. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. In fact, if people were stingy and kept things, you usually got cursed some way. Oh, and yeah. they'd do you in. They'd hoodoo you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if and especially here in this, in the, this area, any show of wealth was also frowned upon. Mm. So if you tried to show off because it made other people feel badly. And if other people felt badly and were mad, or you took things that might not be yours, again, they'd hoodoo you, they'd fix you. Can you imagine? This gets back to the, the, the idea of offense. Yeah. What bad manners is offense? Oh, it's horrible. It's an insult. It's an insult. Yeah. Mm. It's an insult to life. I Isn't mean, that interesting? Who, who are we? to block out everything so that we can, we're, we're the, imagine from the indigenous point of view from these stories, we look so foolish. Mm. We look so foolish. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, 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 we, 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 we. I, Unwise, it's, maybe. It's, it's, it's hard to say, you know, if, if these paradigms, these paradigms of, of capitalism, it's easier to conceive of the end of the world than the end of capitalism. I've heard I've heard it said, right? Like or or Well, or I the, believe that the that the the former will happen before the latter, unfortunately. Ooh, ooh. Well, it depends it depends on what world we're talking about. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but we can live in Your people have seen the end of the world a few times. We've seen it a few times. <laughs> but uh uh there's still opportunity, despite these kinds of our tendency to go in this direction and make us more lonely and more paranoid. There is the opportunity to open the heart. And such as when we think about Rattlesnake in this story, everybody's laughing at him as the way people oh. who are going to be arrogant in a stout way might laugh at the things you and I are talking about. Right, yeah. But again, these good things are always possible and will bring good things to the people. We always have the choice, Obi, you and I and everyone, to do the same. Mm, that's and, beautiful. And Rattlesnake may be this lowly, remember he's a plain looking guy, he doesn't look like he has many material things, but he has what Hummingbird, that we know from the beginning, valued most. She sent, she took messages for the old people, she took care of the old people. and rattlesnake will bring these songs to the crickets from up the mountain so when the old people who are blind 
will know to make sure that the younger people are bringing food for them and are preparing. And also, so the old people who are blind can remember if and when they had their eyes, mm. the beauty of fall, mm. the colors of the leaves. That's right. So it's not material things, but it's it's the beauty of life continuing. Yes. And that's what Rattlesnake is bringing up. And that's right. what Hummingbird always cared about. Why wouldn't those two get together? <laughs> uh, the 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 self knowledge, the communal yeah. knowledge, yeah. the shared knowledge. Yes. There's this theme also in the story of of giving, right? The giving, as right. we've been talking about with the wealth, right? right? There's right. the there's ultimately hummingbird giving. There's a chain of giving. Hummingbird giving her heart yeah. to rattlesnake after he gave his knowledge. To the people to the in a people. selfless act. The selfless act. I, and, and it goes on and on. I mean, Coyote gives Rattlesnake a chance. Right. The giving of a chance. Yes. To, to, to possibility, not closing him down because of his homely status or the whatever. The goodness is catching. The goodness is catching. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like, 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 a, like a sort of like infectious, yeah. infectious goodness. Just as the way is fear and all of those other things that are seem to have a hook on us today. Those things are catching too, but you know, the antidote, I hate to sound like a, you know, old hippie or something, but the antidote is love. Okay. Well, love, 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 love is such a big word. It, I, it's such a big word because it offers eternal hope and the hope, the hope, especially in a context written by sort of industrialized fundamentalism that we are trapped inside of, it seems most yeah. days, love is ultimately non-commodifiable isn't isn't love um the true love i'll say mm -hmm. it has to be predicated on empathy empathy that's beautiful that's beautiful well that that would be a particular kind of love you know i go back to plato gosh a lot of greeks are coming up today but we've got like well they were thinking about these things <laughs> this, this, right this doorway into a different dimension the spiritual dimension that is love right so from the physical the physical yeah. love begins with like the eros right yeah. the erotic it goes up through like the the philos which is yeah. like you know the the love of uh of wisdom there's other loves like pragma the love yeah. of duty and that kind of thing and then you go up to like agape which is the universal love which yeah. is the love of of god and of course nature. you can flip that hierarchy you mm. can have agape be on the start oh, oh, and, then and then go, go all up. the way up Ooh, as that's, that's with nice. hummingbird hummingbird's already at the agape level oh i see right yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that that was what was so necessary in a partner that they have that mm before they even go to the Eros. Yeah. This culture is totally predicated on Eros mm. so that we can't even get to the deeper kinds of loves. It's all predicated, if you watch the media, on physicality. On physicality. Ah, what a, what a, what a, what a limitation. What a lim and it won't last because the physical, that's one thing, but it's, but it's unless you have and you can start with Eros, that's fine. But unless it can bloom and make those other types of love as important or more important, it's not going to last. Mm. Dogs have Eros. Mm. Animals have Eros. Um, and, but they also, I assume, have much more. But we definitely, I know, need much more than Eros. We need much more than Eros. So I, I, I suppose this is why I've always been so drawn to philosophy as much as I have been yeah. to psychology about anything else. Because it's a way of living. How do yeah. I live? How do I, how do I calm how do the I lonely? Be? How, how do, do I, I be? Right, the loneliness inside yeah. of myself. Because yeah. I've got that poison. Yeah. yeah. We, I, I'm, I deal with it every day, every night, driving up this mountain alone. I go, okay, you know. Now what? Um, so, uh, you know, I go out and have all these great ideas or save mm. the world or do these things, but you still have to reconcile the self by itself. And what do you, what or who and do you use as an antidote to somehow keep you connected? Right. right. I suppose there's mystical truths behind Eros that, that are you know the two becoming one yeah physically or spiritually but 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 there is this there is this sense of sex at its basis level that is a um 
that is a, a, a augmentation of this me and you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is like there's this there's this alienation that that might be implicit in yeah. the sexual role that I yeah. am I am half. I am only half. Yeah. I am not whole myself. Well, we can't remember. We can't procreate alone. right so there is that but again (laughs) again you know if this is a story about love yeah then you know this is not a story of procreation no getting back to rattlesnake it it isn't there's no there we don't go on to talk about hummingbird and rattlesnake's children and we're not interested and we're not interested right and neither was the story interested right so the tellers of these original stories what the story was about is what what are what are important components of love to look for what does it what what matters here and again mm-hmm. i would invert sort of that hierarchy that you 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 mentioned with the greeks with the you know starting with eros because here i think it starts with agape mm-hmm. and the other way around because all these guys i mean you can imagine as you mentioned you you imagine mountain lion being this kind of strong man you know that that was attractive and he he was Confident, the high school arrogant. jock, you yeah. know. He was a and capable. I and mean, very. I mean, he's capable. got a role. Oh you know? yeah, he, he, he's yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's he's, he's not an ass. No, you know? no, yeah. no. But it's those things aren't as important as the agape, the the heart, and the things that matter to one another. He was the most disappointed. He was. That was the interesting. Most, well, you, you but point I think, that out. Yeah. But I think he was assuming that he's also the star of the show and yeah. had and had bigger muscles you might want to say than the other guys yes 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 and so he was assuming which is again his punishment Mm. he's assuming that his power was going to make him win yes okay very good all right so i i mean i started my first book the first line to my first book the california field atlas was that this is a love story yeah and so the quality of that love i wrestle with to this day i mean and i'm sure it will take me to the end of my days the love there, I suppose what I am describing is something that transcends that relationship. It is experienced in my body. As a, later in my third book, in The Force of California, I say, this is a family album. And what I try and do then between those two lines, that this is a love story and this is a family album, is to, is to, is to um, imply a maturation of that relationship to my subject. You know, the subject being... And the I would say, Obi, California. what what was happening, it is a love story, but I think that your love of the landscape had to be, it wasn't just you. Mm. Part of it was the landscape wanting to make love to you. Mm. Mm. You can't do it alone, Obi. You can't do it alone. It didn't call, you weren't driving around just saying, okay, um, I don't have anything else to do, so I'm going to write about these plants. Right, right, right. Or this landscape. Something... Something, something called to you too. Something I know. Called, and Westerners don't want to think that way, but it did. Obi. It's human. It's, it's human. human. It's it's walking. Yeah. Oh, here's the thought: like the the erotic nature of hiking. Oh yeah. I don't. That, <laughs> you know the, the 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 feet on the ground, mile after mile, as the world unfolds around you, yeah. envelops you. Yeah. I become of it i the i'm walking through the mountains the mountains are walking through me yeah and 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 that that almost then becomes like a, an aesthetic experience of atonement yeah right yes. where i where the 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 um some original sin is forgiven there is no sort of damocles you know you made me think of something i have a friend in mexico and you know they're people that they it's catholicism christianity but so much of it is in, in obviously infused, or they've infused, the indigenous people have infused the Christianity with an indigenous kind of religion. And he and his family, and he's a modern type guy, he and his family take these, this, this journey where they walked, hiked 140 miles mm-hmm. to this virgin, and they, to this virgin, and it's all about giving up everything and sore feet and all the thing to get to this, to sacrifice, to get to this story of this virgin, um, the, the Virgin Mary, who sacrificed or helped somebody do something. Yeah. So they, and it, it replicates the journeys the indigenous people used to take in the desert, in the high desert, where they would walk for miles on these journeys 
and for these visions of healing and all of that. And so you can see, I mean, I've never heard of the Spanish or the Portuguese going on these long journeys for these visions. Uh, and of course, the, the people... They're, they're pilgrim trails in Europe. Uh, are, the same are, kind of thing. Well, but pilgrim, really? The, is that more about discovery or is that about visions uh, hmm. you know I'd be, I'd be i'd be hard pressed to say and and you know i mean there there is certainly a spiral that we can go down towards yeah. uh uh mythic archetypes across world mythology and uh, although i really i really hesitate to some degree to do that in fact like when i when i talked about when i when i um uh equated uh the archetype of rattlesnake with the archetype of prometheus i do hold off a little bit because i don't want to be dismissive right dismissive in the form of the story and its cultural relevance at the time okay so like uh while <laughs> also wasn't prometheus kind of a big powerful guy <laughs> and rattlesnakes not <laughs> I, I but, guess but i guess idea, it's all relative to the gods no but it's but it's all it's all about bringing something that's necessary for survival right 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 and 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 importantly rattlesnake was not punished no right as as prometheus as was right, right so right. so the comparison fact, rattlesnake was rewarded <laughs> <laughs> that's true so the compare the comparison is is um um is 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 not as interesting as the contrast right for, yeah. probably right it's important not to for discussion these narratives purposes, yeah uh hey so check this out we have people tuning in right now greg from oahu hawaii oh, how chico california vancouver washington hillsborough oregon and more oh my gosh thank you all so much for for um i'm humbled <laughs> humbled okay. up on this mountain we're gonna we're gonna turn from from agape love back to pragma love a little pragmatic love we okay. have we have we have a um we have a uh um a, a question here from somebody on instagram named cantrell moss uh, uh you talked in a previous episode about your vision to acquire land on behalf of the tribe to grow food sustainably in sonoma Yes. Uh, do you plan to have indigenous plants, birds, and or animals on that land? Which native plants do you think would be most marketable as food sources? Um, that's a native, as far as native plants go, that's a very interesting question. It is. Certainly the berries would be marketable. Uh, we're, we're, we do want to grow a lot of the indigenous berries here the huckleberries and things that can grow, but it all depends on where in the landscape we have the land that we would be farming and growing these things. One of the things we, one of the problems, if you will, mm -hmm. that we encountered is we have land, our land, our current farm if, is down in the valley and many of our fruits and vegetables um, and indigenous plants grew in, different environments one of the things about sonoma county is its diverse environments yes. and food many of our food sources were only grew in certain of those environments so we found that some of the things that we wanted to grow on the farm that we ate wouldn't grow so well down there they needed to be closer for example excuse me closer to the coast yep. many of the huckleberries and the things that were around the redwood force um would only grow in the forest and won't grow so well where the farm is. Right. Also, the acorn trees takes a long time for those to grow. Now, a lot of people have begun <laughs> growing acorn mush and things like that, and, um, uh, and and or acorn trees for the for the acorn mush. But that's all kind of and they're selling the acorn powder. They're gr grinding it and selling it to people. Mostly, older Indians like that. Um, <laughs> So again, it all depends on what we can grow, what indigenous plants will grow mm -hmm. in the environment where the land happens to be that we are farming. Again, we're caught in, as Obi would say, the larger capitalist system of fences. So our mm -hmm. farms and the things that we're growing are limited to certain areas. We don't have open corridors. We're, we've become much like the deer and the other animals here where we're fenced in in many places. And so we have to grow things that 
you know, we can grow. But um, one of the things that are marketable that we can grow are the berries uh, and, and some of, you know, those kinds of things. Um, we're also looking to grow a lot of um, foreign, if you will, plants that so that we can feed people. Our goal is we're currently feeding our elders with organic produce, but we're also want to expand that so that we can grow enough organic vegetables and food to sell at cost in low income neighborhoods so that the people in low income neighborhoods can have the healthy foods that wealthier people can buy, for instance, at Whole Foods. Yeah. So that's our bigger goal here. And of course, a lot of the indigenous, a lot of the people here wouldn't want to eat acorn mush um, uh, <laughs> or uh, dried salmon or something that we have. But uh, those are the kind, those are so w- w- to answer the question specifically, we're restricted uh, to grow the indigenous plants that will grow wherever we happen to have our fenced in property right to grow these things right so. right right well it's 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 in inside of a whole paradigm of farming in general yes it is which is rather anathema to the pyrogenic and we're trying to use cultures. all the methods of uh, sustainable farming mm-hmm. because we are here we can't one of the things we have to be very clear we can't go back right now to the way it was we have to find ways to integrate all of us and all of our knowledge here and now to create a sustainable future yes. with all the here and now that we have. Very good. Very good. There is, I, I, I think we should bring open the discussion and you know, open the circle to an inclusive yes. discussion of, of the land back movement as far as, you know, what's going on in the East Bay with Segorate Land Trust down there, or even, even on the, you know, within the lands of the Southern Pomo and Coastal Miwok, we've got like earth seed happening, uh, which is, which is a farm where, uh, the, uh, uh, black queer indigenous movement is growing towards this idea of food sovereignty, right? Yes. That which which I think is a that's process. That's in Casadero, I believe. That's a wonderful program. Yes, yeah. indeed, yeah. right on. Yeah. So you can look that up too. They have a, like a whole program where you can go pick your own vegetables and that right. kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and the empowerment of food sovereignty as it's related to identity, as it's related to resurgence yeah. of all of this kind of stuff seems seems to be completely integrated. And it's so wonderful and it's so important that people of color are finding, are, are back working with the land. And I understand as a, a professor, I taught so many Latinos and so many black folks who Right, rightfully so, saw the land as something to get away from because they saw what mm. their parents were going through mm. on farming and all of the things, the pain, the ugliness of the oppressive ways in which their parents were used to harvest fruit for everybody else. But so what we, and I've said this for a long time, what we have to do is make the act of farming an equitable act. Mm where it is noble and empowering rather than um, oppressive and diminishing of the a human of a human being. Mm. So again, a lot of these organizations of color that are doing these things are really changing that paradigm of farming um, that, that, that has been. That's a wonderful. That's a wonderful sentiment, Greg, and I think it's very important. I think I think we should spend an episode talking about yeah. about uh, land ethic and 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 yeah. treating the land and treating people. And I, and I love the fact that uh, people of color that we're doing it ourselves. It's yes. not the big farmers who've exploited us who are doing it. Right, we're doing it ourselves. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, so the last question we have today is uh, Mike Hubbard from Sutter Buttes Regional Land Trust, uh, asking if the conversations on place and purpose will lead to a book. Oh, uh, <laughs> Obi, I'll let you answer that. Uh, we, we've got nothing. We've got nothing to announce announce yet. I mean, great, uh, except for the fact that we are going forward with a season two. Yeah, this experiment yes. of sitting here in this place for twelve months, watching the land transform around us seasonally, and discussing uh, stories as they sort of organically grow 
and um, uh, you know, present themselves in our in our year long narrative. This grand experiment is coming to a close, and we're calling that season one. We're going to open it up for a season two, where we're going to be exploring more of this land of Sonoma County and Sonoma Mountain, and uh, we're going to be even pluralizing maybe with some special guests. Yes, we'll see yes, how it goes. Yes. yes. So we've got plans. As we've far- got plans. We have big plans. But Obi, I, you, you dodged the book thing, and I have to give you credit. I was hoping you would give yourself credit, <laughs> but Obi, you didn't. Uh, so Obi's been, Obi said, well, I had a friend, Scott Langford, who Obi knows his work. He did the Tahoe Beneath the Surface, and he's a Another old, heyday book. Another heyday yeah. book. He's yeah. an old friend of mine. And he kept saying, he's been listening to these podcasts, and he goes, Greg, you and Obi have a book here. And I said, oh, no, no, no. How are you going to do a book? He says, you have a book, you have a book. And I said, oh, Scott, you're crazy. Obi this week said, Greg, I think there's a book here. And I thought, whoops, I'm outnumbered. So, uh, right, right. It, 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 you know, we'll, we'll talk about it more, but I don't want to do like a, just a, a transcription of this conversation yeah. because, because these hour long conversations we have as much fun and, and full of joy, like yeah. real, real clear, brilliant joy for me yeah. every yeah. month are frustratingly small in that every sentence you say greg i i I can see opening up opening up to like 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 uh like flowers dropping seeds to 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 go off and live their own life i see essays inside of all of these sentences so so i've i've begun um going back to the previous episodes and uh and working on outlining some of those essays but we've got some time and we've got i think the most important part is that we have some places to explore yet yes you know i mean i don't want to write the book until we see where the journey goes yeah yeah okay so with that i think or at a certain point at the journey where we see it's ready to write a book because the journey is going to go on (laughs) (laughs) that's a very good point that's a very good point let's let's announce that today's winner of the books i think you get a copy of your latest book becoming story and my latest book the coasts of california today's winner is sylvana ferrera i'm sorry her last ferrera ferrera F E R R E I A E I R A. Ferreira. Forgive me for butchering your last name, Silvana. But uh, thank you so much for um, yeah. uh, Where's registering. She from? Do we, know? we don't know. Oh, okay. We don't know anything about okay. Silvana. But anyway, as yet, she's not a member of your family. She's, she's not a member of my family. I probably know, I don't know. how to pronounce her last name. If I... You remember, my great great grandfather had forty two kids. I'm related <laughs> to everybody around here. So, yeah. <laughs> wow, he misused. They say he missed. He was a last uh, Coast Miwok medicine man, and they say Obi that he misused his love medicine. So we'll end it on this. He misused <laughs> his love medicine, and as a consequence, we're all cursed with sex wildness. But I say that's a good excuse. So. <laughs> <laughs> very good well uh, okay okay my great circle we're going to close this discussion now and we'll see you in june we'll see you in june thank you Ovi. thank, thank you, you Greg. mountain all right thank, thank you, you all <laughs>